if you want to learn how you can display numbers inside logic world both with decimal and binary inputs this video is for you hi in this video i'll show you how you can build single digit displays here in front of me i have three of them and these ones have decimal inputs so if i input a two here a seven and a four for example they are independent of each other they are not connected so they are just single displays and with decimal inputs also here behind me i have the same thing but with binary inputs so i can set a five for this one four plus one let's put eight and let's say seven so it works the same each one is independent of each other uh, and but the input is in binary instead of decimals so let's look at the back part of the displays we can see that the decimal ones these ones they are pretty simple they have a lot of cable routing but there's not much hard logic here if you look at the binary one the the initial part is the same but then there's a, a big part and this is what decodes the binary and I will explain you everything so that you can build it for yourself. So, to get started building a number display just like the one I showed you, we first need what is called a 7 segment display. So this is in front of me is one. So it has 7 segments and normally each segment has a, a letter. So the first one on the top is A, then the one on the right B, C, D, E, F and G. So if we look at the back side, I just connected each one of the segments to a socket here below and each socket has the, the name here of the, the segment. If you look here, besides this one, I just did the same thing but I connected each of the sockets to an input here on the top so we can understand it better. One thing you kind of need to understand here is that this part doesn't understand numbers, it doesn't understand the number 1 or 2, it just understands the segments. So if I turn on the, the segment A, B and C, we have what is equivalent to a 7, but we are not inputting 7, we are just saying which segments we want to turn on. So for example if we want to do an 8, we'll turn all of them on, because the 8 needs all of them on. If we want a 0, for example, turn off G, if we want a 5, you can turn this one on, turn this one off, and this one off. I hope you understood, but if you didn't, leave your questions in the comments, I'll be checking. So here on the right I have the final piece. So this is just the compressed version of the, those ones. So this is what I used in the final build. So the next part you need is a decimal to 7 segment decoder. So before I explain you this part, let me just say that these sockets that are right here would connect to the segments right here. So it's just separated so that I can explain you each part individually, but at the end these sockets will connect to these ones and this part right here will connect to the next part I'll explain you later. So as you can see here, I have the same naming as I had before for the segments. And on this side, I have the actual numbers, the 0, 1, 2, 3, until 9. So this part is what is going to convert a decimal number to the segment that needs to be on for that number. For example, if you turn, turn on the 0, it will see that we have all the segments except the G, as I showed you before. And for example, the 8 that needs all of them on, all of them will be on. So how does this work? It's pretty simple, so for example for the one now, you'll see that it's just a socket, it's connected to a buffer, and the buffer is connected to the two sockets that will represent C and B in this case, that are the segments that be, need to be on for the number one. So, we just need to follow the same logic for all the digits. We go one by one and see for this digit what are the segments that need to be on to display that digit. So, it's just a bit tedious linking all of this. 
it's a bit messy but if you go one by one it's not that hard you just grab here and connect to which one it needs to be on one thing i want to explain you is why the buffers are necessary so i created here a quick example so here i connected two switches to some sockets and the first socket connects to this socket let's think this as the output socket and the second switch connects to some sockets and connects to the first one and the second so if i turn this one on the signal passes through to this socket but it also comes back to this one and connects this one so if we think like this it that is un unwanted we don't want the signal to pass back to some other peg we just want the ones that we are connected to so this is a problem and the buffer solves that so if you turn on it's the same thing but before it connects to the final socket it passes through a buffer so if you see now the signal is not passing back to this buffer because right here it's what it's called a output peg this peg doesn't receive any signal it just outputs so the signal cannot pass through to this peg so the functionality is like we want now so if you turn this one on the signal goes to both if we have just this one it goes just in one direction so that's exactly why we need the buffers here so in here we have our final part it's the same as this one but it's compressed so it's a bit less spacious so right now these two parts is what we need to actually have this digit to to show as a decimal input so right here i have the seg seven segment display here i have the decoder and i just connected the output from the decoder to the inputs and the the display with decimal inputs is done if you are finding this video useful give it a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more content on logic world so out of the three parts that i am showcasing today this one is the one that is a bit more complex so the same as before right on the right i have the compressed version this one is is the same but it's more spaced so that we can explain it better so the objective of this part is to have a way to convert from binary to decimal so right here i have the numbers from 0 to 9 and on this side i have four inputs to be as binary so i can set here the binary like 5 and we can see here that the number 5 is, is light on so how can we convert binary to decimal what we need to do is have the combinations locked in the circuit so that for example if you want to make the number five we make sure that only the four and the one are on and both the two and the eight bits are off so we can think of it as a bunch of end gates and combinations making sure for each of the bit combinations the correct decimal is outputted let me show you how the bits pass through the circuit so seeing the bit number one with the value of one you can see that it comes up to this line and then it goes up to the end of the circuit and then the second bit we can see it comes up here and also goes to the end but this one goes on top of a mount this is because it has already a circuit coming from the back so it was harder to manage the space but it's the same it comes up it goes to the end and then the third bit with the value of four it's exactly the same but it's one row on front of it it goes also to the end and the fourth bit with the value of 8 is the same thing okay now that you understand that these zones represent each of the bits of the input I'll try to explain you where are the end gates that allow us to make the combinations so let's look for example at the number 5 the number 5 is all of these straight line that is right here so this relay and everything in this straight line is for the number five so this works like the signal back here is going through some relays and at the end it goes to the output so if the relay is on like this one the signal on the back let me turn on this bit for example the signal will pass through if the peg on top is on and 
it will pass through through this one if the peg on top is on and it will pass if it's on and it will go to the output so the objective here is to make sure that the signal is passing on all of them and here is where the end gates are so it's not an end gate in specific but the relay can work as one and now we can make the combinations by adding or removing these inverters on the on here so this one has an inverter this one does not have this one has so and at the beginning it does not have some of them have so you can see that to make a five the first bit this one needs to be on because it does not have an inverter the second bit cannot be on because if it's on it will not allow this signal to pass the third bit needs to be on and the fourth bit needs to be off so let's try that then you can turn on the fourth bit so signal is on here the inverter here inverts it so it allows this signal to pass this one is on so it unlocks this relay and the final one the bit is off it inverts and also lets the signal pass so we end up with a 5 so if you understand how we can make a 5 now we just need to make these combinations for all the other numbers so let's look at for example a 0 all the bits are off so the 0 has inverters in every bit so every bit is inverted and allows the signal to pass through let's look for example at the number 7 for example the 7 this one so 7 needs the first 3 bits to be on so this one does not have an inverter no inverter no inverter and the last one has an inverter so the, six, the 7 passes so it's just repeating the same and adding the inverters all in the, the correct place to make sure that we can combine the correct bits to make the decimal number one tip I have for building this is that there is one pattern that we can use that makes it simpler to make these combinations so if we see here the first bit with the value 1 it has an inverter then it has no inverter inverter no inverter and it goes on so one on one off and the second bit with the value of 2 it has two inverters then no inverters for 2 and then two inverters no inverters so it's just always this pattern so the the bit with the value 4 it's 4 with inverter 4 without inverter and then 4 again and the same with the 8 so the 8 is 8 inverters and then it will go on for 8 non inverters but since we only need to the digit of 9 we just have the, this last two so finally let's look at the compact version so it's exactly the same as it is right here so let's start by the input so the inputs are right here and if you look closely this first one is directly connected to this first line the second bit is connected to this top line right here the third one is connected to here and the fourth one is connected to here and we can see here that the first line is connected to the inverters the second line is also connected to inverters and to the relays so exactly the same thing but all compressed down if you are building this for the first time you don't need to build this compressed version you can build it in a more spacious manner and if you see it works you can then try to compress it so the three parts we need to build the binary number display are here you already learned it so let's put it all together right here I have it so the firstly we have the seven segment display then the decimal to seven segment display decoder and the binary to decimal decoder and finally I just routed the inputs to the top so we can test it out so we can have a zero with all the bits off then a one a two a three a four five six seven eight and a nine so all digits are working fine I hope you understood it all and as I said in the beginning this is just a single digit display so we cannot show bigger numbers of course we can clone the display and put it on the side and control each one individually but it's not a single input that is controlling both displays at the same time so to do that we need to learn more about something called BCD binary coded uh, decimals and my next video will be about that so if you want to check that out please subscribe 
this is the end. I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you did, leave a like and see you in the next time.